Hello viewers, today for unboxing, setup and review we have the VTEC VG101 cordless telephone with handset speakerphone. I don't usually dabble in new telephones much, I prefer the older ones but this I thought was intriguing because this particular series has been on the market for I would say two decades plus at this point the previous model of this telephone, which was the VTEC CS6114, was around for, I would say, at least 10 years. Very popular phone. It retailed for, I think, $12 or $14. This one retails for $18 and change. So there's a decent jump up in price, but a flaw was fixed with this model. The previous model that was $12 or $14 did not have speakerphone on the handset and that was a pretty common complaint so this model does so it's nice to see that VTEC actually lessened to the commentary from the consumers and built the next generation of the product with that feedback in mind so let's go ahead and open this up and see what we have here and just as a preface to this video so that it's not confusing because it might be confusing I'm, I'm going to talk about this telephone like I know everything about it but yet I'm opening up the box for the first time I have used this telephone before not this particular one I use these at work where they make copious amounts of calls in and out all day long so I am not at all foreign to using these or how they function so in the box we have the the line cord, which is an RJ11 cord. We have the AC to DC, or actually is it AC to AC? No, it's AC to 6 volts DC power cord. We have the battery and the battery cover. Now just to speed things up, I'm going to use this battery. It's the same one, but this one is charged up already. This battery is the model CR2112 uh, or the model number BT162342 or the model number BT262342 it's a 2.4 volts 300 milliamp nickel metal hydride battery it's more or less two AAA nickel metal hydride batteries wrapped in plastic with a proprietary cord attached Panasonic typically uses AAA cells themselves and people rave about that in comparison to these packs which I don't understand because these packs are cheap. They last usually several years and you can buy them on Amazon for a couple of dollars. Super inexpensive and easy to find. 20 years ago when we had to buy these at Radio Shack for $25 a piece I could understand the complaint but nowadays this is the way to go these are cheap they're easy to find and they're pretty reliable next we have the handset itself with the instructions manual and the base itself the packaging isn't too bad it's all cardboard but of course there has to be the stinking plastic film and there is plastic film over everything in here at least it comes off fairly easily Okay, so we have the manual here. It looks like uh, three, four, five, six. I think that you can expand this up to six handsets. I'm not sure what the model number of that replacement is, but uh, it's kind of an annoying manual. It's one of those ones that opens like a newspaper. Whoops, and it just broke. Um, but for what it's worth, it actually came in the box and it's on paper, which seems to be a, a rare feat these days. And it goes through most of what you would need to use this telephone. In fact, it's actually almost 
complete. It's very thorough uh, for being called a quick start guide. This goes through pretty much everything that this phone can do. Granted, it's a simple phone, but uh, it's nice to have the piece of paper in the box, and you can sit here and follow all the steps to do what you want to do on this phone. So we're going to power this up now. We got to undo the the cord here, which is wrapped an excessive amount of times. One of the things I like about this adapter is the shape. The shape of the adapter does not block any other outlets because it goes in like that. You know, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them are that shape where they end up blocking outlets. So this one fits nicely into uh, Standard outlet doesn't block up any other ports. Let's plug that right in there. And then we'll go back to the telephone. And we'll plug this into the bottom of the telephone here. And the cord can route through there like that. Next we have the line cord. This goes into your telephone jack or your telephone modem whatever you're using at this point in time they get this right most people just plug right into their modems because nobody has a traditional phone line anymore which is really a shame and now the phone line goes in here right next to the to the cord uh, power cord and it too can route in here so it sits flat on the table these are nice soft rubber feet. They'll grip the table so it doesn't slide around. However, the base is very lightweight and the weight of the cord will absolutely take it and move it around a little bit. So you're going to want to make sure that you really straighten out the cord good and make sure it's got enough slack to sit without being pulled. Now the handset is already open so we'll just take the battery and plug this in here. The Red goes on the left. It only fits in one way. It goes in like that. The cord sits like that. And then we close the handset. And this handset is ready to go. So the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to set the date and time. So we get some better lighting on this here. So the date today is... 03, uh, even this day, I don't know, I'm going to check here. Date is 23rd. 03, 23, 23. And we press the select button there. The time, I don't know what time, let's say it's 7.30. And then we use the uh, up and down selectors to get AM or PM. And we'll do a select again. And now we have the date and time down at the bottom. And what I like about this is that it stays there all the time. You're talking on the phone, it's still there. You're talking on the speakerphone, it's still there. So you always got the date and time. Plus you've got a counter so you know how long your particular call has lasted. So, the handset itself stands up on the table nicely. Goes in and out of the cradle easily. That feels a little cheap and hollow, but I don't know what you expect. It's a cheap phone. Uh, but the handset itself does not feel cheap at all. It's not creaky whatsoever. Some phones, the battery cover, like, is all creaky and loose. This one's designed such that you don't actually hold the battery cover on the side. So that's kind of an interesting and good design. No creakiness. No creaky plastic whatsoever. Nice and solid phone. Actually, it's got some decent weight to it, too. Um, I personally am really impressed with this phone. I think for the price, you get a lot of phone here. So, let's take a look at some of the settings that we have. One of the things I'll, I'll say that I don't particularly like about it is the display contrast. I think it's kind of poor. It's showing up pretty pretty good on the camera. And it's certainly readable in person, but it's like dark blue or dark gray font on a blue background. It's just not super clear. 
to me it's actually a little better with the backlight off um, it's certainly readable but it's not not the best I've seen the numbers nice big buttons easy to press the font is clear the labeling on those buttons is clear the layout is logical the numerics are backlit the bottom row of buttons is not nor is the talk and off buttons that's very common though I find it very stupid because these numerics are standard any phone you go to they're gonna be in the same order it's all these other buttons down here and up here that are not standard that you're gonna need to be able to see and you can't in the dark uh, but with that being said you, you can feel it pretty easily it's got the little line on there so you know those are the talking off buttons left to right makes sense um, so by no means is it impossible to use in the dark speakerphone button is differentiated from the other buttons even though it's in the same row so you're not going to be missing that uh, it's easy to reach everything with one hand every button is easily reached so let's take a look at some of the settings here we have the phone book which I believe only holds 30 entries and that's another thing I'll, I'll knock on it too 30 entries is really kind of abysmal memory is super cheap these are basic short alphanumeric entries a couple of kilobytes should store hundreds I, I really think that this should store something more like 5,000 entries do I call more than 30 people on a regular basis not really but if the space was there I would add more I would add restaurants I would add stores I would add things that I don't call very often I don't know the numbers to um, what I typically do is I just add the numbers I call often because when you get the call coming in the phone book uh, the caller ID will match the numbers in the, the in the caller ID to the names in the phone book so if I type in five 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 one two three four into the phone book and I assign it the name Frank when that number calls I'll get Frank on the caller ID rather than wireless call or, or Bridgeport, New Orton, you know, whatever the the state and the city is or whatever the useless information typically is. So that's a good, uh, a good function. So phone book, we want to store something, we just do menu, add new entry, and we'll do 555-1234. Enter name, we'll call this Bill. This entry of the text is a little bit tedious, but it's a one-time deal. And it's saved. So it's very easy to use. We have a shortcut to the phone book up here. And we have a, short a shortcut to the call ID up there. Both very easy to access. No entries in there because this is a new phone. Um, so let's see, we got phone book, call ID log, the ringers. got five ringers and they have some good volume that's all the way up and uh, as long as it's quiet in the house you can hear this clear across the house several rooms over great volume to the ringer that's much louder than more expensive phones I've used set date and time the settings it's got a couple different languages on here French and Spanish it's got the voicemail waiting indicator light. Um, I guess I should not have it's just a word on the screen so you can cancel that out if there is an error. The key tone, you can turn that off if you wanted to so it's quieter. It still supports pulse dialing. And that's it, all the settings you got in there. Um, redial haven't called anything yet so that's empty and that's pretty much it those, that's all the features very simple phone it makes and receives calls that's about all it does uh, but at this price point you can't really complain the caller ID log also only holds 30 entries again I think it should be something like 5,000 entries but it's not so let's get to using the telephone here 
Um, we'll start off with a call on speakerphone. A call, uh, an outside call here. The buttons are rubber and they have a really nice feel to them. It, this does not feel like an $18 phone. This feels like a, actually a pretty good quality phone. They press real nice. They've got good feedback. Now, granted, if you don't keep it clean, these might not last. Because rubber buttons do tend to get oily over time. So, you got to keep it clean. Rubber buttons do... T um, plastic buttons tend to last longer. But I don't think they feel as nice sometimes. They're really cheap and tacky. So this feels really nice, but you just have to keep it clean. So let's go ahead and make a call on the speakerphone. We'll start with the volume all the way up. Hello, Farmer Jones out here. And you can hear it's pretty much at normal conversation volume. And the berry fields. And uh, this is our crop report message for the month of March. 2023. Spring is just around the corner. It's a little crackly at the oh, highest setting. With our farm One down winery. completely gets rid of that. Open for its regular spring schedule of every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from high noon to 5.30 p.m. We have tastings and wine by the glass, and uh, reservations are not required during this early part of the season. Off Got a good volume range. At, uh, six, six Walnut Tree Hill Road. That's by the Monroe Town Line. Now, as the weather permits, we're out pruning trees. All right, now I'll take a listen to the earpiece. I'll put the volume up all the way. To help the crops be healthy. Uh, all the details about our farm can be found on our website, simplyjonesfamilyfarms.com. I'll start lowering it down. If you're a college student interested in working during our berry season in the summer of 23, our applications. That's the lowest. Done online, web page updated, and can be found under farm, about the farm, internship opportunities. We occasionally post social media during the... So it's got a good, uh, good clear sound on uh, both ends. So good volume, good volume range. Now I'm going to call and I'm going to talk through the telephone so you can hear what the pickup sounds like. We'll get an idea of how good the pickup is, how far away the pickup, the speakerphone works and how good the clarity is. I just recorded into this answering machine a message of me using the speakerphone. So let's go ahead and hear what that sounded like. One new message and four old messages. Message one. This is the first testing message on this telephone. Just as a baseline comparison, this is with the telephone on regular phone mode. Now I just switched it to speaker and I'm keeping the telephone in the same position as I had it before, speaking at the same volume level. Now I'm going to put the telephone down on the table. So now the telephone is standing up on the table. I'm speaking at a moderate conversation volume, about a foot and a half away from the telephone. I'm going to start moving away from the telephone now. This is about two feet away from the telephone, three feet away from the telephone. This is about four feet away from the telephone. And this is typically the point where I say if it, if it picks up clear or reasonably well at this, at this distance, then it's a pretty decent speakerphone because you're not going to be shouting at a telephone from across the room realistically. I'm going to start going back further, but I think from a realistic standpoint, this is about as far away from the telephone as most people would ever use it. Now I'm about five feet away from the telephone, six feet away from the telephone, seven feet away from the telephone, eight feet away from the telephone, nine feet away from the telephone, and this is about ten feet away from the telephone, which is about as far as I can get with the telephone in the position that it's in. Um, I will move the telephone, because it looks like it's still recording. I will move the telephone to somewhere else in the room, and I will go back further. So this is uh, three feet. 
feet, four feet, five feet, six feet, seven feet, eight feet, nine feet, ten feet, eleven feet, twelve feet, thirteen feet, fourteen feet, fifteen feet, sixteen feet. I'm all the way across the room right now. I'd be very surprised if it's still picking up, but maybe it is. I don't know. I haven't heard the machine cut off, so it must be picking up something. All right, so that's the... Uh Microphone test. I'm going to go ahead and hang up now. Okay, I'm going to record a second message now. This time I'm going to go outside in the yard. I'm going to walk around the yard so we can get an idea of how good the coverage is. I'll go all the way across to the edge of the property, which is, well, this is on the ground, so if it goes to the edge of the property, that's pretty good. It's like 40, 50 feet traveling through solid ground, which is, is going to be a restrictive situation. I believe VTAC claims the range on these phones is about a thousand feet, but the catch to that is that's an, a line of sight situation where there's nothing between the base and the handset, which is really not realistic. There's not really any scenario where you would do that. So I would say in a real world scenario, you're going to get about two, 250 feet out of this phone with walls, trees, furniture, your head, other obstructions in a normal environment around the phone so um, and then of course if you put the phone upstairs it'll work better than you put it in the basement like one right now but just for the test we'll do that um, it's also noisy outside because the frogs are coming out in the spring so we'll get an idea of how it sounds when you have background noise and on that message I'll talk about how I felt about the speakerphone pickup one new message and five old messages Message one. Hello again. This is another testing message on this VTEC VG101 telephone. So I'm going to walk outside now. So if you hear me clearly through this whole conversation, then we have a pretty good coverage. The house is all well, between, let's see, the position where the telephone is and the edge of the house is probably like. 50 feet, 60 feet, and then the yard's another 75 or 100, so we'll, we'll go pretty far and see how it works. So I just went outside now, and you can probably hear in the background the frogs. Uh, I'm going to switch this to speakerphone just for a minute. Okay, now it's on speakerphone, and so you probably can hear the frogs pretty well. what my yard sounds like in the spring. Very nice nature sounds. All right, put it back on phone mode. I'm gonna go into the front yard here and we'll see how the, how the reception is. So as far as that speaker phone test was concerned, I am extremely impressed with that speaker phone pickup. Really, it's one of the best pickups I've heard in a long time. Usually once you get past the five or six foot mark, the uh, pickup is really shoddy and spotty and it's not that good. And it got quiet towards the end, but it was definitely uh, really pretty good. So it continued to remain impressed with this telephone. As far as the incoming audio on the speakerphone is concerned, it's pretty clear. It's not the most lifelike audio I've heard. Uh, I'm in the corner of the front yard now. I'm going to walk down the street a little bit. It might come down here a little bit. Um, this is really about as far as up to I'm going to turn around now just so that I'm not on such a recording phone in the range. Anyways, uh, the audio quality of the speaker phone is, I mean, it sounds like a telephone. It doesn't have a level of into it. It's not the most lifelike speaker phone I've ever heard, but it's very clear. What's slightly bothered by is that the gate, which is a, a technical audio term, which describes the volume level of sound that the speaker start producing the audio, the gate is a bit high. And I think if the incoming audio is not mo 
modulating at a good level, meaning like someone's not speaking into their telephone properly or something like that, you might miss the real beginning and part of the end of words. But sometimes that's a problem because you need the beginning and end to understand what the word is. But as long as somebody is speaking into their telephone properly, as you heard on a test call before, it's not an issue. And in using these phones at work, really have not run into a situation where the speaker phone produces a, a, a non-clear, indistinguishable call. So not really an issue, but it is something to note because other phones I've used don't do that. As far as the audio quality of the earpiece goes, it's kind of the same way, not quite as much. The audio quality is not like a really rich, lifelike tone, but it's perfectly clear. It sounds like a telephone because that's what it is. End of messages. Oh, my message got cut off there. But anyways, what I was saying is to conclude my rambling about the audio quality. Very clear, but it lacks some of the low end that makes it more of like a rich, lifelike sound. In other words, it doesn't necessarily sound like a corded phone, a real analog corded phone where it's got a real rich tone. It sounds more like a telephone, but that's what it is. It's a cheap telephone. So the range outside was pretty good. It didn't go, uh, it, it cut out right around when I thought it would. And the reason why is because I have the thing downstairs, so it's it's underground. It's going through solid dirt. You know, if you put it upstairs, you'll get a couple hundred feet on, into your yard, no problem. Uh, so range is good. It's on par with with uh, most of these phones. When it comes to these VTech and AT&T phones, I find that both the way the audio sounds and the range really doesn't vary that much. All the Deck 6 models are, are really quite similar. I, I tend to think that it's almost the same bore just inside different outer shells. So pickup was good and clear, picks up loud and clear, and I wasn't shouting, it picked up my voice just fine. Um, coverage was good outside until I got all that you know underground concrete and dirt in the driveway in between it, which is exactly what I would have expected to happen. Um, let's go ahead and call it just so you can hear what the uh, what the ring sounds like, what the caller ID looks like. I'll zoom it in here. So you can see the caller ID. I'm going to call the 5551234 so you can see how it will match the name on the caller ID to the name I just put in the phone book. And uh, it's not working because I did not plug in my testing telephone. Okay, let's plug in the testing telephone and try again. There we go. Yeah, slight delay in the ring, but nothing crazy. Pretty standard for the cordless. So that's what the car ID looks like. You can see it took the name I put into the phone book and typed it in here. If you need to mute the ringer temporarily, you can press off. And the ringer is muted for that call only. It does not turn on by itself when you pick it up from the cradle. That's a feature I like, but it just doesn't have. What it does have, however, is that when a telephone is off, and I'll show you the backlight here, when a telephone is off and you pick it up from the cradle, try to get it in the shadow here, the backlight comes on immediately, which is super handy if you're making a call in the dark. So, I think that pretty much wraps this up. Um, wall mount, it is wall mountable and it mounts flush up against the wall. It is a couple inches thick though. It is, let's see here, about four inches front to back, but it takes a standard wall mount plate and it goes right flush up against the wall so it doesn't stick out at all like other other phones do. I think the the previous model of this phone was a little bit more condensed like this way. This seems to me a little bit bigger which is odd but it's still not a crazy size. So all in all I think this is a phenomenal phone for the price. You're getting a, a fully featured handset, speaker phone, backlit buttons, really good speaker phone too. You got decent ringer volume, 
Um, it does have the, the page button if you lose it. And that too has got some good volume to it. You've got expandability if you want to add more handsets. You got a couple of basic features, a few different ringers. You can store a couple of phone numbers in there. Really good, I think for uh, for eighteen dollars and change. I mean, maybe it'll go up over time. I don't know, but I think for eighteen dollars and change, you're getting a really solid phone with this. I've used phones that work better; they cost a lot more. I've used phones that cost a lot more that don't work anywhere near as good as this one does. I think this is. This is a 10 out of 10 for the price point.